banks have made huge advances over the past decade in tackling fraudulent activity by cyber criminals and protecting clients. But as transactions are processed almost instantaneously rather than in hours, it's harder and harder to stop illegal activity. So, as payment processing times are cut to fractions of a second, will cybersecurity get left behind? To look at this in more detail, I'm joined by Sherry Maguire, Chief Information Security Officer at Standard Chartered, uh, Sir Rob Wainwright, partner at Deloitte, and Jason Oxman, President and CEO of the Information Technology Industry Council. Welcome all to Cybos Thank you. TV. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Sir Rob, if I may, from your experience working in intelligence as a previous head of Europol, and now as senior partner at Deloitte, of course. How do you see the cyber threat at the moment and the nature of financial crime evolving? Well, in many ways, uh, Johnny, I don't think that the threat landscape has changed that much in recent years in the sense that cyber criminals are still running the same playbook. Uh, utilizing traditional malware types to scoop up as much stolen personal data, banking credentials, for example, as possible, dump it on dark market trading sites for fraudsters to use for other purposes, certainly on a bigger scale, but it's essentially it's the same, same playbook. What has changed, however, in the last two years is at the top end of this cyber criminal economy, the emergence of a much more aggressive set, more enterprising set of cyber criminals um, and they are using advanced social engineering, for example, more bespoke models of, of malware uh, to directly a target bank transfer payment systems and the networks of other global companies. That is certainly a much more aggressive threat, one that's been concerning me for some time, one that's very challenging, um, I think, to, for, for many banks to deal with. Jason, your upcoming panel at Cybos is focusing on new business models and cybersecurity. Uh, what do you hope the audience comes away with at the end of it, really, from, from your discussion? Well, Cybos is really about the intersection of financial services and technology, and the two industries have really come together. If you walk the show floor here this week, you see how technology companies are deploying new tools to enable financial institutions to better serve their customers. You mentioned the interesting tension uh, between the amount of time it takes to process a transaction and the amount of time that institutions have to check for fraud. In fact, when financial services networks were first deployed, they built in days of time, in some cases, to do those fraud checks. Now we have seconds. So, of course, the implementation of technology services to address these fraud challenges is incredibly important. So we'll be talking today about the tools that technology companies are making available to financial services institutions to make sure their customers are protected and at the same time those transactions are processed as quickly as possible. So what can financial services firms do right now to protect themselves and their customers? Well, some of those tools that technology companies are deploying include the things that we carry around with us every day. So imagine, for example, that a financial institution wants to check if a transaction that you as a consumer are engaged in is a fraudulent transaction. They know where you are based on where you're processing that transaction, but they also know where your phone is because your phone has location-based information in it. Imagine if your financial institution can use that phone's location to check and see if it's the same place that your payment card is. And if they're not in the same place, likely that transaction is fraudulent. So those are the kind of tools on the consumer side uh, and then on the B2B side, of course, as businesses uh, check uh, their transactions to make sure they're not fraudulent, um, there are tools regarding locations, identities, uh, and uh, transaction history that can be looked at. And we'll be talking about those today as well. Sherry, what implications does the move to a more uh, open digital banking environment we have right now uh, create for the overall financial ecosystem? Well, I think there clearly are challenges that are presented with new banking platforms that are being introduced, new interconnections, the way that we are migrating different types of payment processing even. So if we look at, for example, the use of distributed ledger technology, earlier this year we made an announcement at Stanford Chartered that we had partnered with Alipay to do the first cross-border transfer of payments from Hong Kong to the Philippines. This was quite a a big step, if you will, using that technology instead of traditional payment processing and payment platforms. The challenge, or one of the opportunities, is how do we ensure that we continue to have the right levels of trust for our customers, that as those interconnections, new APIs, other types of technology that we're introducing, that we're making those as secure and trustworthy as possible. That's, that is truly the challenge, I think, that all the financial institutions have today in implementing all the new digital technologies that are out there. 
So Rob, what would you say is the, the single biggest thing, most effective thing that can be done to tackle cyber and financial? Well, we see our cyber criminals turn technology against us. I think we should be leveraging the best of technology uh, as well. Uh, for example, to process in a, as automatic way as possible the detection of, of intrusions, for example, and, and unlocking the power of data analytics. That's what I've seen throughout my career. If we can bring a larger group of set of data together, apply modern data analytics to this, we'll see a lot more of the, of the criminal picture before our eyes. This is important because what I'm observing in, in, uh, in the banking sector right now is that the same people are engaged in cyber fraud and money laundering, the same criminal syndicates, and yet we're still separating our data streams around the management of those risks. So bringing them together, power of data analytics, you know, taking the fight back to the cyber criminals in a much more effective way. And collaboration, which I guess is a key point in Cyber 2019 in itself. Jason, how is, how is the tech industry at the moment helping to advance the global payments ecosystem as well as security efforts to protect its cyber from cybercrime? Well, what's really interesting is the definition of what a technology company is has really changed. All the companies you see here are technology companies. They're in the business of providing financial services, but they also use technology in order to secure transactions and provide more utility to their customers. So what technology companies are doing here at Cybos is showing off software and hardware solutions uh, that enable fraud protection uh, at the same time that they enable uh, the advance of technology to the customers of financial institutions. So Cybos, as we talked about before, is really about the intersection of financial services and technology, but there's really no separation between the two anymore. Uh, banks are positioning themselves as a technology differentiator. A lot of the services that financial institutions provide uh, today are uh, services that financial institutions years ago would not have differentiated based on the technology they use. Um, that's very important for customers and that's a lot of what we're talking about here. Sherry, we've already touched on how quickly things are developing and changing and the challenges that that actually poses, but how can banks best respond to the risks posed by these new business models and, and rapidly evolving technologies to maintain a strong cyber security posture? There's a couple of approaches that uh, financial institutions globally should be taking around how they address these types of risks. First and foremost is addressing information and cybersecurity as a business risk. This is not just a technology challenge. It is not just about new adoption of technology into um, organizations. It's really about looking holistically across the different risk types, across the different business units, functions, CIO, COO, CRO, uh, various business lines within your organization and bringing all of those together to look at security holistically. One of, the, one of the biggest opportunities, of course, is to ensure that all of these new digital technologies that are going in are secure from the start. So building that security in from the beginning. And of course, having the message and the positioning around security within financial institutions really driven from the top of the organization, setting the tone that security is just as important as stability and availability, some of those traditional things that we think about in the, uh, the payments and the financial world, but really looking at uh, security as that overall holistic business risk. And Jason, if we can end with you, the tech industry often runs on the motto, move fast and break things. But why might that approach not quite work uh, when it comes to innovations in banking? And, uh, and what can banks learn from the tech industry? And what can the tech industry learn from the banks? Yeah, the technology industry does have that reputation of moving quickly, innovating quickly. Uh, and in a lot of cases, uh, for financial institutions, moving quickly is not the right pathway forward because, of course, when you're talking about moving money uh, and protecting against fraud, uh, nothing is more important for the customers of financial institutions. So when we talk about deploying innovations and partnering with financial institutions, technology companies, of course, are not looking to break things. They're looking more to uh, enable customers of financial institutions to take advantage of new technology while also ensuring, as things move more quickly, including the payments rails, that we're still able to do the kind of fraud checks and secure transactions in a way that customers have come to expect. Well, it's certainly a fascinating topic, and thank you very much, all of you, for sharing your time with us this morning. Sherry Maguire, Sir Rob Wainwright, and Jason Oxman. Thanks for joining us on Cybos TV. Mm -hmm.